A grim-looking woman stands before the house of our main character, Aino Seiji, who has the lust to satisfy all the women near him, but he fails to do so as he has failed as a Rizzy magician. The woman rings the doorbell and suddenly asks Mr. Zero Riz to give her a kiss, or he will die. Aino comes outside and sees the lowly-looking vampire wannabe ass woman as if he has felt the wrath of women before, and closes the door as he says he has no need for a Shikigami, also known as a god of death. He wonders if it is a new way to scam people, but suddenly that woman phases through the door and appears under his weenie, which causes Aino to lose himself. They move towards his room, and the woman pulls out a death note ripoff called Kiss Note, where if someone's name is written, they will meet their doom unless they kiss someone. The woman looks serious as Aino looks disappointed in life, and the woman contradicts her statement by saying she will die, instead of the person whose name is written. Aino snaps and butt kicks her out of his home, and she begins to cry. She tries to emotionally blackmail him, but Aino closes the door and tells her to unalive herself. Aino becomes irritated by her cries and inquires about the situation. After he hears her so-called idea, he thinks that she wants her so badly and asks if she will demand a sum of money after he kisses her, but she denies it and says that he will save the poor girl's life. The cherry boy loses it and jumps in for a kiss. The woman explains to him how the book works by putting two politicians' names together, and they begin to smooch each other on the TV. While Aino's name is written alone in the book, he asks what he did then since he has no partner to be paired with. The woman calls it manly assault and he sits in a delusion. She wants her fantasy of seeing two men having happy intercourse, but she will spare Aino the worry. If someone remains unpaired in the book, they will live as a cherry person forever and the woman will die. She asks if he has someone he wants to kiss, and he takes her to his school where a woman with massive meat bags, Hyama Akin, is someone whom Aino likes. The grim woman, Kuri, says no one can see her except Aino, and they see Hiyama approaching them. Aino engages with her in a conversation, and suddenly Kuri pulls down her pants to show the weird choice of panties she has, and Aino loses it. However, Hiyama can see Kuri and she asks what is her problem, and now both of them are left puzzled beyond infinity. When Aino says he has nothing to do with Guri, she reveals that he has kissed her, and this makes Hiyama hot as a boiling pan. She tries to execute Aino because he supposedly cheated on her even though they're not intimate or anything but he dodges her and runs away along with Guri. They hide behind the school, and Guri calls Hiyama a brainless yander who will kill anyone who tries to interfere with his love. When Aino tells Guri to write her own name since it is all her fault, and considering they have kissed before, she wonders a bit, and suddenly a knife falls on her back, which causes her to fall unconscious. Hiyama throws the knife from above and approaches Aino to confess her feelings and expresses how bad she felt when she saw him with Guri, and she cries. However, as Aino has already kissed Guri, she pulls out another knife out of her ass and decides to kill Guri. Aino tries to wake her up, but she's out cold, and as Hiyama's knife approaches them, Guri silently writes their name together on the kiss note, and they kiss. Guri congratulates them for becoming a couple and reveals her true self. Guri is actually an angel or a cupid, but at least not a Shinigami. Guri explains that their so-called bond will continue to strengthen thanks to the power of Kiss Note. However, quite a sudden turn of events as Guri writes her name with them, and she kisses Aino right in front of her yander girlfriend, which makes the beginning of their weird love triangle. Hiyama and Aino both scream, and Aino falls unconscious. He wakes up the next morning and sees Guri giving him a morning kiss which scares the living shit out of him, and he remembers that the last day was not a dream. He tries to remember what happened. And when Guri kisses him, Hiyama goes bonkers and starts to stab him in the neck. But he does not die as now they are paired with an angel, they have received an angel's blessing. He returns to his senses and sees Guri eating with his family, which causes him to wonder if she has committed some sorcery to blend in. She laughs and pulls out a hair dryer looking ass tool that can brainwash anyone. Aino tells her to stop, but she says that they're now lovers, so it is natural for them to live together. However, Aino does not agree with her, and suddenly, his cat is turned into a human-faced person and tries to justify Guri's action. Aino wonders what has happened to his cat, and it answers that he is a supervising angel, named Corley, of Guri, and has taken the form of his cat for a moment. He asks if she also has brainwashed her sister, but since she is at her school, her mission fails to do so. Corley asks Aino and Guri to let him see Hiyama, and in the school, as soon as they approach her, she stabs him as soon as they meet, and Corley is left shocked. One of the schoolgirls sees them together and feels disappointed that Hiyama is in a relationship with Hiyama. Corley takes Hiyama, Guri, and Aino to the back of the school and explains to them the consequences of their situation, which might lead them to even lose their souls in hell. In the end, Corley tells Aino to continue his life as usual, but he should stop supporting Guri as she can do everything on her own. The blonde-haired girl who saw Aino and Hiyama together sees him with Guri and calls him a certified lover boy. And as soon as she falls, Aino stands before her to stop her, but she grabs the kiss note and runs away. 
She goes to the rooftop, and Aino asks her to give the notebook back. But when she moves back, a shield appears over her, and the corner of the roof breaks, which causes Aino to rush toward her and they fall to the ground together. They survive, and Aino is in a steamy position with her, and Hiyama watches them. The girl runs away, and Hiyama follows her. When she tries to attack her, her knives break due to her shield. Kiri and Aino run toward the blonde-haired girl and confront her. She replies that she saw everything, and tried to write her name in the book. However, she cannot do it since the book is only controlled by angels. The girl begins to yap about her love for Hiyama, but unfortunately, Hiyama and her, Kichagasaki Yuzu, are sisters, but she cannot refrain herself. In the end, Guri writes her name with Hiyama, but however, she becomes a member of the love triangle, making it a whole square situation, and when moves to kiss Hiyama, she slips and kisses Aino. Hiyama watches Mr. Zero Riz transform into an Ultra Riz of a cheater and punishes them both, which marks the beginning of their terrible love life with an angel. Yuzu sits in a BBC, big black car with her assistant and watches the Hiyama household's maid throw out the trash, and she rushes toward the kin to pick up something that resembles her. She returns to the car with the trash bag, and begins to sniff everything out of it since she's a big fan of Hiyama, and has a cheap copy of her sitting with her. Kichagasaki tries to look out for Hiyama, whether she has left for the school or not. Suddenly, Guri appears in her car and tells her that Hiyama has already left for school, and she asks what she is doing here. Guri laughs and says that she seems interesting. In the brainwashed household, Aino's sister, Akua, starts to ignore him since Guri has started to live with him. She continues to ignore her. And when Aino grabs her shoulder, she body slams him for an instant co. Maybe she watches too much of WWE. Aino flies away. And he notices something weirdly shaped above him, that being Hiyama's panties, and she has seen Akua beating her love. However, as she rushes toward her with the knives, Aino tells her that she's his sister, and she instantly begins to act like a baby, but Akua silently walks away. The next day in their school, Yuzu and Guri have opened a love nurse room, where they help students who are scared to talk to women and help them achieve their dream of making out with their crushes. Hiyama and Aino see their poster on the school's notification board, and they go inside the room to ask what the hell are they even doing. They tell their motives as they follow Aino's order to make those people fall in love who love each other, not those maniac men who kiss each other 24-7. Aino feels ninny and confiscates their kiss note. While Guri sits silently with a smug face, Yuzu asks how the Cupid even knows about love. She talks about reading romance manga and learning from the internet, what a weep. When Guri asks Yuzu about her knowledge of love, she simply says that she adores her sister, so that's where her knowledge of love comes from, it's something that comes right from your heart, and suddenly, a paper comes flying in from the window. Hiyama and Aino walk down the hallway as they yap about how stupid Guri and Yuzu are looking in the room. As they talk, Aino faceplants himself into Mary, Mary, and they fall. She apologizes, and Hiyama asks if she likes someone, but Mary says it is quite the opposite. In the nurse's room, Guri and Yuzu read the page, and it's love poetry. They decide to find the person, and their love-deprived teacher, Kusunoki, enters and asks them if they have seen a page somewhere. They return the paper, and he feels ashamed that his students have read it, but those two mentally ill women ask him who he is in love with. Mary asks Hiyama and Eno to lift heavy boxes and take them into the nurse's room, but when they enter, they see Guri and Yuzu making a ruckus, and he asks what is going on, while Mary hides behind them. Suddenly, Kusunoki becomes all flushed, and he falls unconscious as he sees Mary behind. She takes a sigh and comes in to get him already, which makes everyone realize that something is going on between them. Eno holds a meeting about this situation since Mary does not want to date Kusunoki, but Kusunoki wants to date her. Kuri does not find anything to object to in this relationship, but Aino thinks this is morally wrong as their teacher can be caught with PDF file charges. However, the girls make him understand the situation, and he agrees to monitor their situation. Kuri and Yuzu become excited and go down, while Hiyama clings to the cherry boy. Those two girls kidnap Kusunoki and have him in a bondage cosplay. They tell him to speak about his love for Mary in the mic, but he loosens the rope and runs away. On the roof, Aino calls Mary to tell her that things will get complicated if this goes on. Mary feels disappointed since she thought that the wimpy boy would confess to her and dump Hiyama. Aino feels confused, and Mary says it was just a joke since Hiyama would kill her. Kusunoki hides in a room from the two barbarous girls and watches Mary conversing with Aino on the roof. In the end, Mary decides to not let Kusunoki get on her good side, and it is good to end things before they even start. Hiyama has overheard them and decides to put his feelings away for the first time. He reminisces about the moment when Mary read his love poem, and how he felt loved for the first time in his entire life. Aino arrives and talks everything out with Kusunoki, but Kusunoki apologizes and feels stressed due to his blatant motives for being a student. 
Suddenly, Yuzu arrives from behind and tells the both of them that Mary has been taken as a hostage in a robbery. However, in the town, she walks freely as Guri hides in something that looks like a bank saving rubber on her head and plans to make Kusunoki come to the place. Kiri follows her and tries to hold her hostage, but she accidentally bumps into her, and the real deal happens when the bank's alarm wails. The police arrive, and the thieves take Guri and Mary as a hostage. Kusunoki arrives and sees the situation as described by Yuzu herself, and when Eno sees Guri, he asks what in the world she is doing here too. Yuzu grabs Kusunoki's tie and tells him to save the girl he likes in a heroic way, and he should tell her his feelings in front of her. The robbers begin to speak, but Yuzu tells them to shut up and calls them a bunch of side characters, which enraged them and one of them shoots the bullet. However, before it can hit Yuzu, Eno jumps in to save her and the bullet grazes his arm. Even though she has repelling powers, Eno saves her as he thinks it is not right for a girl to face danger, and she blushes. Eno tells Kusunoki to save Mary from the robbers, and he finally builds up enough courage to save her. Suddenly, Mary pulls the robber's arm, and Kusunoki punches the robber. However, his punch was frail as paper, and it failed to do anything. As Kusunoki falls, Hiyama arrives and notices Eno's wound from the gun. And when understands that the robbers hurt him, she goes bonkers and tears them into pieces. Now the situation has calmed. Kusunoki confesses his feelings to Mary as he cries. And Mary tells him to read his love poetry to her like a good boy, whenever their label of student and teacher is not viable in the future. The crap show is over, and in a park, Mary finally confirms her feelings for Kusunoki, and she decides to wait for him until he gets stable in life, and she, herself gets a high-paying job. Yuzu offers to put their name together in the kiss note, but she stops them and says to trust the process. At the end of this ruckus, Yuzu tries to thank Eno in the most average tsundere way, and multiple reporters swarm Eno to ask about the incident as his sister watches them in the park and looks angrier than ever. Sometime in the past, Akua was stuck on a tree while a shady figure followed her, but thanks to Eno's efforts, the shady figure collapsed. Eno tells her to jump, and as soon as she jumps, Akua wakes up, and she understands this bond will always be a dream for her poor ass. She gets back to her senses and gets fresh as she wonders what was that dream, until suddenly Guri gets out of the bath in all her morning body glory. Akua stares and asks who she is. Guri introduces herself as Eno's girlfriend and Akua is left engrossed. Eno jumps into the bathroom to see if Guri is here, and he sees her all exposed. However, the light beams and steam cover her, a great fourth wall break reference. As she starts to jiggle her parallel tanks, Akua asks about Hiyama, and Guri says she is also his girlfriend, which enraged the Brokon and torments the hell out of Eno. He becomes depressed, and Guri vanishes away. At the school, he wonders about Guri doing something terrible with Akua, and Hiyama overhears him. However, she chills down and gives Eno her handmade lunch, and they eat it together in the recess. As they eat the food while Eno is impressed by it, Hiyama fumes up as hot as a bulb's filament and asks about Guri. He explains his corny situation and asks how her relationship with Yuzu. Hiyama refrains from talking about anything related to her family, and they continue to eat lunch. Akua walks down the street where she encounters her brother's useless maidens, Guri and Yuzu. Guri introduces Yuzu as Eno's third girlfriend and Yuzu jumps on her to ask about the negative activities of Eno so she can make Hiyama hate him. However, she asks those filthy creatures to move away and calls their relationship shallow since they do not know anything about her brother like she does. Suddenly, she becomes quiet as the shady figure from her past. The demon Stalos arrives after he was sealed years ago, which causes Yuzu and Akua to run with their tails between their legs. Kuri wonders what has gone wrong and in the city, Yuzu continues to run away until Eno holds her hand and asks what is going on. She replies as it soon should, and tells him about Stalos. He runs away to help Akua, but Yuzu stops him, and when he notices her, she instantly leaves his hand and begins to blush. Akua hides in the tree once again and remembers all of the things she did with her brother. As soon as Stalos arrives, Guri finds her and notices how Stalos looks like a penguin. Guri disguises herself as a granny, but Stalos smashes her face which looks like a broken egg, and asks Akua for his wish, which is to mate with her and make humanoid penguin babies that can continue their legacy and take over the world. Eno arrives and sees Akua on top of the tree, and yaps his speech of how it is his duty to save his bro con of a sister. Stalos arrives on the tree and jumps to make his dream come true, and Eno asks her to jump. She feels reminiscent and jumps while Stalos smashes his head in the tree. Kiri, Akua and Eno walk down the alley as they discuss how the police arrived as soon as he saved her from the tree. The siblings have their moment, and Eno tells Akua that she has not changed, but she has grown. Kiri tries to get the Brokon to confess her love, but she begins to ride his hair and calls him a pervert who loves to manhandle women and runs away as she blushes. Kiri calls little sisters a bunch of edgelords and asks Eno to go on a date. 
Fast forward to the weekend. Guri loves to wander off, so Aino has attached a rope to her belly, so she cannot stray away from her master. She sees a couple walk hand in hand, and she imitates them by holding Aino's hand. She runs faster than XLR8 from Ben 10 while she holds his hand. Together, they reach an amusement park and Guri buys a Drake-type ice cream which wiggles due to its length, and she swallows it all in one go as Aino watches a real couple on a real day. However, Guri sees two boys together and calls them a real couple, since she needs to fuel her boy love's pleasure. Suddenly, the so-called real couple begins to fight as another girl arrives and blames the man for third wheeling, and out of the blue, many other women join the tormenting session. The man gets up and tells them to stop their yapping, and one of them slaps him. He begins to raise his hand for domestic violence, but Aino stops his hand. However, those women begin to fight back against the man, and Aino gets caught in between their home wreckage, but he manages to escape. Kiri comforts him, and when all the women leave after leaving that disgrace of a man behind, the kiss note gets on fire as a candle falls on it. They both are left speechless and stand as still as a statue. They reach home and tell Coralie about this, but he does not know what will happen now. The only speculation they can make is that the relationship and the kiss note will unrelationship themselves, and all they can do now is wait. The next day in the school, Hiyama watches Aino, and when he expects the average lovely response from her, she becomes cold-hearted toward him. Kuri enters and as Aino tells him about the situation, the class starts. After school, they walk back home and Yuzu arrives to bully Aino as his only lover has started to ignore him. They tell Yuzu about the kiss note incident and she becomes helpless. Suddenly, a black girl with orange hair arrives from a shop, and Guri introduces her as Tiara, who is also a cupid just like her. She asks about the relationships in the notebook, and she says nothing will happen if the relationships are solidified. After the love display between the two men, they walk into the park and Tiara gives her own kiss note, which looks like a phone, to Guri as she has quit being a cupid. As Aino wonders about Hiyama, she suddenly arrives and poofs the knife on Guri's head. She comes out of the shadows and says that she has been waiting for Aino, but she receives no response. She kisses Aino, and all of them rejoice as their situation has been solved while a pink-haired woman with big assets watches them from a tree and smirks. A small yuzu stands before her mother, who tells her not to engage with Hiyama in any way as she's a brainless maniac and will attack anyone who tends to oppose her opinions. Yuzu walks away and thinks how bad her sister is and trips on a broken tile. A pink-haired girl approaches her, takes her doll, and yeets it in the fountain which causes Yuzu to rush and catch it. In the present, Yuzu walks to school while Guri and Aino watch her in a new uniform. Aino asks Guri what Yuzu is doing in another school, and suddenly she sweeps away into the school. However, when Aino tries to follow her, it's an all-girl school, and the headmaster asks if he has some monkey business here. Yuzu hides behind a statue and waits for someone until Guri arrives on the statue and asks what she is doing there. A Yuzu's double, who looks like an average male Instagram cosplayer comes, and Guri becomes confused. In the car, Yuzu sits along with Guri to do her average job of stalking her sister, Hiyama, about what undies she will wear today. They watch her from the locker room's window, and Yuzu glazes at her. Guri takes a snap, and the shutter causes every girl to become cautious, but they do not find anyone when they see outside. Guri and Yuzu run away, and Yuzu asks what has she done since she will not be able to use that spot to stalk anymore. Yuzu asks Guri to give her that picture, and when she opens up the phone, she opens up the Love Checker app to check compatibility. They learn how to use it, and when Yuzu's love is compared with Hiyama's, the app calls it one-sided, and her heart breaks into pieces like a truck ran over it. Aino arrives faster than the speed of light and asks Guri about Hiyama's picture she sent him, and as soon as he utters Hiyama's name, she sneaks onto everyone and asks about herself. He tells her that it's nothing, and Hiyama confronts Yuzu about peeping her in the changing room. Yuzu says that it is her job, not to be a peeping Tom but to look over her. However, since this is not her school and she's just playing an act to look over Hiyama, it can cause problems, so she asks her to go back to her own school. Guri checks the compatibility between Hiyama and Aino, and Hiyama's love for Aino is scary as the app begins to glitch out. As soon as Guri tells her about this, Yuzu runs away, and Hiyama says this is for her own good. As Yuzu runs away since she cannot accept the fact that she just lost to a guy with no riz, it begins to rain as she remembers that when she was about to fall in the fountain, Hiyama saved her, and Yuzu felt love for the first time. She begins to wonder if this is happening because Aino is a boy, or if she's Hiyama's sister since they even managed to cross the kiss notes barrier. Someone calls her out, an ugly bastard straight from a hentai, and asks if she needs help, but she screams and uses her barrier to slit off his clothes. The fatty runs away, and she falls into the lake, as her barrier also cuts off the ground. As she falls deep inside the lake, she feels how she does not actually hate Aino, until suddenly Aino arrives and pulls her out of the lake. 
Yuzu gains consciousness and sends down a bitch slap barrage on his face, while Aino tells her that the water level is shallow, just like her love for Hiyama. She tells Aino that what Hiyama said is right and that she should not bother looking out for her anymore, since she has failed to steal her heart before Aino. Aino wonders how he managed to bag such a hottie, and Yuzu's slap sends him flying into the lake and asks why he is still so humble. She cries and announces the average love rivalry where she will not lose against him. Even though she declares war on him, he is still the humble Aino we all know. Hiyama arrives and brings an umbrella for Yuzu, only because Aino told her to, which shatters her even more. However, when Hiyama picks up Aino and they stand under a single umbrella, Yuzu confesses her feelings once again, and no matter what her response is, she will always watch over her. Kuri arrives and wonders why the love compatibility between Yuzu and Aino is good, even though she's the certified hater. While they have their minor reunion, someone watches them from the park. The next day in school, Aino catches a cold and walks with Guri sandwiching his face in between her legs. The girl from the park arrives and takes them to the library as she wants someone to fall for her. However, she does not know what is the name of that boy. But Guri wants to help her so they decide to find the name of that certain boy with the help of Yuzu and Hiyama. They leave the classroom, and the girl arrives from behind to give Guri the homosexual 100 manga that she dropped and the girl also has a thing for boys ex boys. Guri befriends her since they share the same taste, and they return to their class. Aino sneezes in the class due to the cold, and Hiyama brings him close to warm his head with her own head, the heads of heads, and all of the boys stare at Aino for achieving their dreams with the hottest woman in the class. After class, Aino arrives to help the girl with glasses, named Shikimi, and Guri still has not arrived. So, they both go on the love endeavor themselves. Aino tells her how her daily life goes with the three psychos, and Shikami somehow understands his situation as she does not laugh at him. Kiri the slowpoke arrives at the place where she planned to meet Shikami, but she's super late as she brought out the homosexual manga lottery with her as Shikami told her to. She pulls out a phone, called Love Phone which looks similar to a blue cat robot from the future. Shikami leads Aino to a dark and grim-looking warehouse and wonders if her crush is a ghost. Suddenly, Aino is stuck in white sticky stuff, and it drags him down. Shikami reveals that her crush is actually Aino himself. While he is stuck in the madness of the fourth girl, Guri tells Yuzu and Hiyama about his situation, and they run to help the helpless man from Shikami. Aino gains consciousness and sees himself stuck on the ground, while Shikami begins to unclose her clothes and removes her disguise. Shikami is revealed to be the pink-haired girl who stalks Aino. When he tries to move, she stabs his hand with a small knife, begins to step on it since he's invincible to an extent, and starts to have fun her own way. She pulls out the phone kiss note that she stole from Guri, and wonders if she will become invincible if she adds her name to them. Guri tells Yuzu that the girl's name is Shikami, and she remembers the pink-haired girl who threw her doll away when she was a child. And suddenly, Hiyama returns and confirms if it really was Shikami as she wanks Guri. Aino suffers the consequences in the warehouse while Shikami gets on top of him and begins to move the knife in an unusual manner, which makes Aino scream like a lady, and Shikami begins to move on to the big step to steal him from Yuzu and Hiyama. Shikami continues to play with Aino, moves down her hand to touch his little man to give him pleasure, and asks her what made him fall for Hiyama. Speaking of the devil, Hiyama arrives and breaks the wall, just to see Shikami on top of Aino, and reveals that she is her cousin. Hiyama sees Aino's hand bleeding and tries to chop Shikami's head off, but she dodges her. She continues to throw her knives at Shikami and wonders why she always likes to cuck other people's things. As she moves around like a carousel, she steals Hiyama's knives and lets her guard down as she yaps for a second. Hiyama pulls out her hairpin knife and scratches Shikami's arm with that. As she bleeds, this makes things strange even more since Shikami loves to feel pain as she is a pure masochist. Shikami uses the same material to attach Hiyama to the wall and uses her knives to undress her. She becomes crazier and begins to fondle her meat bags as she draws a bloody heart on her. Their lovely yet bloody session continues until Yuzu arrives and rushes to stop the situation, but Yuzu still acts like a pussycat in front of Shikami. However, Shikami admires that Yuzu has gotten control of her powers, while Hiyama has become exceptionally weaker. Aino gets up, tells Shikami to stop this bullcrap show, and asks why they are spraying blood all over each other even if they are cousins. Shikami asks Aino if he does not know anything about the sisters, and he becomes confused as if she has cut him free from the cherry boy tag. She asks Hiyama why did she not tell, and she makes a baby face as she does not want Aino to hate him for that. Shikami begins to whine like a baby and says she will help her return to normal as she moves toward killing Aino. Suddenly, Guri arrives with her failed entrance. Shikami hugs her and proves herself that she's the nerd emoji looking Shikami from before, and asks how to make couples on the kiss phone. She has shushed everyone in the room, and Guri says that as an angel, she has to make the pairs, or it won't work. 
Shikami asks her to add her to the god knows what love angle, but she denies it as she does not sense any love in her. Guri muses Shikami asks what love means according to Guri, and she calls it a warm feeling, something that Hiyama and Yuzu have, but Shikami doesn't. Her dreams are shattered harder than a mirror hit by a brick. She tries to end Guri's life, but out of the blue receives a call from someone to be summoned back and bids farewell to everyone by kissing and removing their bondages. Everyone collects themselves, and Hiyama grabs Eno's head to put it on her deluxe edition mattress. She apologizes to Eno for dragging him into this situation, but Eno tells her not to take it hard on herself. Guri becomes all excited to see them like this, and when she disguises herself as a doctor she checks up on Eno. However, the poor boy has stopped breathing, meaning he has passed away before he got a touch of a woman. Aino wakes up in a fever dream with the average angel get up from a 1950s cartoon and meets Corley. However, Corley looks far more terrifying in his real angel form and scares the shit out of Aino. He returns to his cat form, and Aino drops a bombshell of questions on him. Corley will answer his questions, but first, he takes him to meet the creator himself, God, who looks like a random homeless man with a large ponytail. The god becomes orgasmic to see Aino, and tells him to call him dad, something he cannot relate to, and reveals that he is Guri's father. While Aino is having fun in the afterlife, everyone is blaming themselves for his death, and Hiyama goes as far as to unalive herself, but Guri stops them. Guri tells them that they should become a rip-off of the prince from Sleeping Beauty, and a lover's kiss can wake Aino back up. Hiyama snatches Aino and kisses him for 15 minutes straight, which instead sucks his life, and Guri tells her that she'll do it. When she tries to kiss him as Hiyama turns her face back, she whips out her stick and smashes her in the head since she cannot see his beloved getting kissed by someone else. In heaven, Guri's dad fanboys all over her daughter as if he's a daughter con. Tiara enters the room and serves them tea, and Aino hits the god right in his heart as he asks about Guri's mother. The so-called god cheated on her since he loves everyone, and Aino begins to question his morality. They cut to the chase, and Guri's father asks Aino to teach her about love since she will become the next god after him. Since Guri met Aino, she has achieved enough room to change herself as a woman, and her father bows down to him, against a mere human, and Aino asks him to get up as he feels weird. While they're at it, a tall slender-looking individual arrives who calls himself the devil and begins to inspect Aino all inside out. The devil tells him to stop following God's orders since he wants Guri to convert to demonhood, as she is cute and will be able to fulfill all her naughty desires. The devil and God begin to fight, and Aino stops them as he explains that Guri is a woman of free will. Suddenly, the clock with a bird begins to cluck. The god tells Aino to leave as his time is over there and requests him not to do anything naughty with her daughter. In the worldly life, Hiyama chases Guri down since she tried to steal her lover's kiss. While they are busy with their quarrel, Yuzu slides her pride away and moves in to kiss him, but he wakes up and smashes his head into her head. He finally returns to life, and Hiyama hugs him. Now that everything has returned to normal, Guri asks Aino how his father is doing. While she laughs and Aino wonders if he can really teach this devil of an angel about love, the sun shines on the psychotic ward of a household, where Aino asks Akua about her plans for summer vacation, and she coldly replies that she'll be busy, until Aino offers to take her to the beach, and the Brocon's neurons activate. However, when she gets on the train, she realizes that Aino is making her feel like a fifth wheel even. As Aino sits along with his girlfriends while Akua sits in front of them in a different seat, his girlfriends welcome Akua and she makes the coldest face known to man. They arrive at the beach to see the scorching sun, dazzling half-naked women, and the shining blue sea. While everyone on the beach enjoys, Guri hides from the sun in an umbrella as she plays video games. She hates hot places, and Aino says she is killing the mood. Hiyama calls out to Aino with her oil tankers on the verge of falling out of the bikini, and Aino is left dazzled to see her in raw glory. Yuzu arrives and pokes the eyes of the swimsuit enthusiast, and he calls Yuzu's swimsuit cute too. Double Wombo Combo by Yuzu And while Aino tries to recover himself from the eye-fingering session, Hiyama sees Akua in a swimsuit, but covered in a hoodie, and asks if they can swim together. She walks away as she gives her a light-skinned stare, and throws her hoodie at Aino. Aino and Hiyama begin to have fun in the ocean, and she almost drowns the poor lad. They're glad that they look like lovers. Yuzu arrives and she fails to admit that she cannot swim, so she brings out a tube for major assistance in swimming. As soon as she enters the ocean, she begins to tremble as if someone has breached her walls. They see Akua far away and wave at her, but she acts in the same cold way. Meanwhile, on the beach, Guri looks at her boy's love fantasy and orders her forced boyfriend to get some food for her. She receives a ball from two girls, and she considers how Yuri is better than Yai, and she is so right for this. Guri throws the volleyball, and it lands on Hiyama's milkers. She snaps out of her lovely phase to smash Guri's face with the ball, and Guri says challenge accepted. 
She disguises in a school swimsuit while Aino buys the shaved ice cream and meets Shikami there, who serves the ice cream to everyone. He gets the war flashbacks, and they go somewhere else where Shikami apologizes to him. She notices that his hand injury is gone, and tries to stab his heart, but he stops her, and the batty woman tries to thank him with her body. However, Aino the Giga Chad tells her to stop, and she wonders why Hiyama likes someone as boring as him. Shikami tells Aino how Hiyama was in her childhood, and asks if he wants to know about their family. On the beach, Hiyama and Guri fight each other with the volleyball with a massive display of powers and body assets. The beach becomes engulfed by the power tornado, and in the ocean, Akio begins to feel threatened as Stalos arrives from under the water again to fulfill her dream. However, Hiyama saves her and takes her to the beach, but the not-so-earthly penguin follows them there and they begin to have a showdown against each other. On the other hand, Shikami tells Eno that Hiyama and Yuzu belong to different but rival families in the same house, while Shikami belongs to a branch family and works for them. She continues to tell him, but Eno tells her to stop as he would like to hear this story from the sisters themselves. Shikami walks away and warns him that things might be over by then since Hiyama's family will destroy her. The battle continues on the beach, and Stalos has the upper hand. He slashes her midriff and acts like a mortar shell to attack, but somehow Hiyama stops him and throws him away. However, Stalos runs that back again, and in the end, Hiyama smashes him with a baseball bat and everyone praises her. Aino arrives late to the party and wonders what has happened here. They leave the beach on the train, and the girls tell him what happened so far. At night, they arrive at their school for a test of courage, and Aino is already pissing his pants. They enter the school and see two people there Guri wants to make them a couple, and they move toward the rooftop while Aino begins to imagine ghosts behind himself. They continue to walk to the roof as Guri looks like a Ghostbuster ripoff. Aino feels something off from the girl, and Hiyama thinks they have already become the perfect couple. Yuzu has lost herself since she's scared of dark places, and suddenly, a ghost appears and scares the hell out of Yuzu and Aino. Out of the blue, multiple ripoffs of American horror movies begin to chase the gang, and Hiyama manages to beat some of them. They reach a room, and when they remove the covers from the mirrors, those mirrors take Guri and Hiyama inside while the couple smirks creepily. One way or another, Guri and Hiyama reach the rooftop, and when they get up, Guri begins to massage her oil tanker. Hiyama almost decapitates her, and she asks if Guri really loves Aino. She says that she does, but since she's super friendly with him, Hiyama tells her to step aside since she is just a nuisance. Yuzu's legs fail and Aino carries her on his back, and the couple congratulates them. Aino asks who they actually are and they point at a door that can tell them the answer. They open the door and see the two rivals bullying the ghosts. The couple thanks them as they can rest in peace now, and Guri tells them that the couple is a spirit. Now that they have reached the roof, Guri makes the spirits a couple, and they fly away. Guri tries to show the kiss phone to Aino, but for the first time, she feels left out as she sees Yuzu and Hiyama sandwich Aino. Just like Hiyama told her, she begins to have a heartache as she sees his beloved getting lovely with the other two women while she silently watches. After the despicable night, Guri remembers what Hiyama said to her, and when Aino enters his room with Coralie, he sees Guri trying to unalive herself, but he snatches the knife away. They ask what is wrong with her, and her brain but no brainer thought it would be cool to feel heartache for the first time, similar to other anime and manga. Aino puts the knife away, and head pats her as if she tries to put herself in her grave, everyone will become sad. Kiri watches him with lustful eyes, and Aino's mother enters the room to pass down the brokons yukata to Kiri since a festival is about to happen. However, Aino says nope, he is not going to the festival, and Gura acts like a brain rot since she has already made a festival schedule. His mother backs her up and calls Aino an unmanly man since he does not want to go out with his woman, and suddenly, Yuzu and Hiyama arrive. While his mother continues to degrade the fella, Hiyama asks him to go to the aquarium with Yuzu as she is inflamed to see Guri in the house, and that is why Aino does not want to go to the festival. Guri feels jealous and walks away with a quirky face. She heads toward a manga shop to fuel up her fantasy, but since it is high up on the shelf, a guy comes and helps her. Guri is Guri, so she asks the guy if he likes boys, but he likes girls instead. Of course, someone in their right mind would walk the straight path. The guy asks girl out for tea, and she takes up on his offer as her so-called boyfriend does not want to be with her. She hangs out with the other dude, so much for his love interest in Aino, and at last, they eat dinner together. Kiri tells him the situation about Aino, and how everyone does not consider them lovers since she does not know what love certainly means, even though she's an angel. Kiri calls herself and Aino a forced couple, and he uses capitalism at his finest as he takes her to the festival. He becomes Guri's sugar daddy, buys him a lot of stuff including rings, and goes to the height of calling her girlfriend in front of other people. As there are a lot of people at the festival, Guri asks whether they will be able to watch the fireworks, and the guy takes her to the right spot. 
They watch the fireworks, and to get the best of this situation, the guy sneaks in and tries to kiss her, but she uses her eye poker 9000. She apologizes since she pokes him due to her reflex, and runs away since it just did not feel right. She runs away in the crowd to return to Aino, but she slips and suddenly bumps into Aino at the festival. As soon as he scolds her, she kisses him and apologizes for acting so selfishly. Aino cannot believe what in the world happened to this devil, and she praises yet insults him at the same. While they reunite, Yuzu and Hiyama arrive from behind in kimonos and Hiyama asks what Kuri is doing here. Kuri tells Hiyama that she prefers Aino, but she does not understand what she meant by the heartache. Hiyama watches her lifelessly and yoinks out her knife as she chases Kuri down. Back at the top of the mountain, the guy feels immense pain in his eyes and runs away, while the devil thinks that Kuri is tough to break even though he gave her the ideal guy she would like. Corley notices his presence and confronts him about his involvement in the scenario, but the devil silently goes away. At Hiyama's household, Shikami interrogates a bunch of mobs, but she cannot get the information she wants since allegedly they do not know what she actually wants. After she's done with them, Hiyama's mother arrives, shows her the photo of Hiyama and Aino, and asks what their relationship is. The next day, the mother ties up all the beat-up Hiyama as if it is a Yuri manga bondage, and draws her sword on her since this is not the Hiyama she raised. She pierces Aino's face in the photo and asks her to break up with him. Hiyama sadly agrees. In a park, Corley asks Aino about Gon's request for progress, but since he has been fooling around with his girlfriends, he has made zero progress. As Corley begins to lecture him, Hiyama's family mob shoots him straight in the head, but instead, it makes a hole and he lives. Meanwhile, Yuzu and Guri have their own date in a cat-made cafe, and she flexes how rich her family is. She vents about her power, which acts like a shield when danger tries to approach her. She has had this ability for as long as she can remember and it used to scare off people. As they talk about their pasts, Suriwoka, Yuzu's driver, arrives and whispers something to Yuzu. Aino continues to doge the mobs in the park until a big black man catches him and tries to stab him. However, Aku arrives and takes down all of the mobs, and saves her brother. When Aku sees Corley, she becomes scared to death and hides behind Aino since Corley is inside their cat. Akua asks Aino about the mob, and he thinks this might be Shikami's work. Shikami arrives out of the blue and says this was not her doing. Hiyama rots in the family jail as she remembers how she became her mother's pawn, and never gave her heart to anyone. Her first encounter with Aino was as ridiculous as ever as he bumped into her milkers since he could not see a thing because his cat scratched his eyes. Hiyama helps him with the cat and puts a bandage on his cat's leg injury. Aino thanks Hiyama, and since then, she has taken a liking to Aino. Shikami does what she's best at, playing with men, but Akua stops her from touching Aino and asks if she's the mob's friend. Aino stops Akua and asks Shikami about the mobs and she tells him about the orders that Sue, Hiyama's mother, gave to everyone, and she now keeps Hiyama captive. When Aino asks why, she tells him that it was because she gave her heart to someone like Aino, and their family is pretty strict about giving their heart away to anyone. In the end, she says that Hiyama might not be able to meet him anymore. Yuzu tells Guri the same, and all of them now plan to save Hiyama from her mother. While Aino thinks this would cause a whole nother level of burden, Akua kicks some sense in him, and the whole gang moves toward their house to save Hiyama. Guri and Yuzu arrive at Hiyama's house, and Guri cannot believe how unfathomably high inch the house is. While they plan to go inside, Suriwoka tries to stop them, but they cannot step back now. Guri and Yuzu disguise themselves in old Japanese fashion, and Yuzu becomes Ms. Blush Ocean. Suriwoka worries about seeing them this unprofessional, and they enter the household just to see multiple gooners who already anticipated them. They immediately recognize Yuzu, and both of the girls move inside to intercept the whole situation. Tsuyuoka's soul takes a Deidre from his body, and the girls begin to fight the mobsters. Their leader asks everyone to attack the approaching women, but Guri and Yuzu throw a bunch of love grenades, which makes the mobs fall in love with each other. Guri and Yuzu become sneaky and open every door to find Hiyama. After a few moments, they finally open the last door and see Hiyama standing silently. However, as Yuzu tries to approach her, Hiyama sends down her knife at Flash's speed and scratches Yuzu's cheek. Yuzu becomes confused and tells her that she's here to save her, but Hiyama asks her to go back and calls this situation foolish. Guri asks Hiyama what happened to her, which makes her move and attack Guri with her knife, but she blocks it with the disguised katana. As soon as she asks about her heart, Hiyama launches her away, and Guri says that if she does not come back, she will do all those naughty things including Gluck Gluck 3000 to Aino and steal his heart. Hiyama tells her to go frick herself and slashes Guri's belly. They fall down, and Guri asks her about the dream where she marries Aino, but she simply says that this is the real her now, and she cannot give her heart to anyone. Hiyama throws another knife on her face, but at the last second, Yuzu arrives and activates her shield to protect Guri. 
Even though Yuzu and Hiyama are family rivals, Yuzu will not get back unless she changes Hiyama's mind. They continue their argument. Until Su, Hiyama's mother, arrives and asks Yuzu to not push her daughter to the wrong path, the same path as the dirty-minded girl, Guri. But no matter what, Yuzu is not going to back down even if it makes her steal Hiyama. On the other side of the house, Akua, Corley, Aino, and Shikami arrive and they take the thugs down. To make things fun, Shikami throws Corley toward her, and she flies higher than the Eiffel Tower since she's scared of the humanoid cat. Shikami grabs and throws Aino to the ground, and this catches the attention of Guri and Yuzu. Everyone finally meets the mother who's hotter than her own daughter, and she asks Shikami why she brought Aino to their home. Shikami just does her service and begins to have fun with Aino in front of Hiyama's eyes as she stabs his back continuously, and her beef windows begin to expand as she sees blood. Yuzu screams at Shikami and tells her to stop. But when Aino says that Hiyama's stab was stronger than this, a fire inside Hiyama ignites. However, her mother notices it and claps her cheeks which causes her to fall. Her mother calls for the katana and gives it to Hiyama to prove her innocence by decapitating Aino. She moves to follow her mother's orders, but she cuts down the sticky stuff and Aino sits. Hiyama brings the katana close to his face and says farewell to his love. However, since Aino is as persistent as ever, he asks why she is following her mother's orders, even if she has free will. Hiyama silently tells him to go ghost mode, but Aino wants her to talk first since she's weeping. He manages to pull the bag again, and she falls on him as she cannot do it. Kiri celebrates this short romance union, and Hiyama grabs her skull to throw her away. Her mother finally gets the answer, and suddenly the air blows stronger as Yuzu's mother arrives at the scene to take her daughter away. But when she gets close, she sees the knife wound on her face and goes absolutely bonkers on Hiyama's mother. She asks her to stop venting her anger and Achiyama's mother calls her a child. Yuzu's mother opens up a large barrier and explodes the whole area. While everyone stands on the ground, we finally get to see some mother x mother action on the rooftop as they begin to fight with each other. Aino asks the girls what is this goofy situation. They explain that Yuzu's family has a shield crest, which means they protect people if paid to. Meanwhile, Hiyama's family is the opposite. They're professional hitmen who work through underground channels for powerful people. Their mothers are not on good terms because of the contrasting family businesses, and how they fell in love with the same man together, the father of Yuzu and Guri. The situation went to shite when Yuzu's mother interfered with Hiyama's mother and father's romance, and she has hated her since then. That is why, Su tells Hiyama to not give her heart to anyone, except her family. Hiyama calls out to her mother and tells her that even if she feels disgusted she loves Aino more than anyone. But Guri says her mother has the most love fluid flowing out of everyone and Su sends the katana flying straight into Kiri's head as she feels embarrassed. Yuzu's mother laughs at Su as she doesn't even know her real ideals, but she knows Hiyama has herself together more than her mother did. She is willing to go to heights that no one could imagine, and Su was left stranded after their father abandoned them. Hiyama tells her mother the last time that she will not abandon these feelings, and somehow, her mother agrees but if she sees a chance, she will eliminate Aino. While Aino tries to speak, Su gives him the Mr. Irrelevant tag, and they finally have fixed this family drama. Hiyama holds Aino's hand, and when Guri holds her hand, she begins to chase her with her old trusty knife. Shikami and their mothers watch them, and Hiyama apologizes to Yuzu for hurting her, which makes the sis con all red, and she blows up. To make her feel even better, Hiyama kisses her forehead, and she melts away. This causes her mother to wonder about her reaction, and Su tells her that she loves Hiyama, even though she is also in a relationship with Aino. Everything has returned to normal. And Hiyama's relationship with Aino has grown stronger than ever, but when Guri watches them, she feels yet another heartache and understands how one-sided her love actually is. In school, Hiyama accuses Guri of touching Aino, but she calls it a false accusation. Aino tells them both to stop, and he thinks they will get along better after everything that happened, but their relationship gets more complicated. To shut their trap, he offers to take them on a date, and they both suddenly stop quarreling. However, he forgot his wallet in the classroom, and Hiyama goes with him while she calls Kiri a third wheeler. Kiri understands her feelings since she feels more left out as Hiyama and Aino get closer even though she's a cupid. They both walk down the hallway and see the announcement of the cultural festival. Hiyama seems to be enjoying herself even more since she has taken her mother's permission. And when they enter the class, they meet Shikami, who has now enrolled in their school to make things more complicated. Amesha, Yuzu's mother, drops Yuzu at her school and asks her not to get involved with Hiyama again. As soon as she leaves, Yuzu goes into Achiyama's class once again, and the class starts. Their homeroom teacher announces the new transfer student, Shikami, to the class, and when Yuzu tries to ask why she is there, Hiyama stops her. Shikami is here to stop the situation between Hiyama and Aino since her both mothers told her to monitor their daughters and tell them if anything goes fubar. 
The whole class becomes a fan of Shikimi, and when the girls tell Hiyama to come and talk, she dips into the classroom. Yuzu feels upset and calls Shikimi on the rooftop for an edging session. She asks what she is doing here even though Hiyama told her the plan, but she still finds it awkward. Shikimi closes in and says she feels as if Yuzu is telling her not to break them up. Yuzu pushes her away, but Shikimi holds her hand and makes Yuzu lean on the railing. Shikimi asks if Yuzu also likes Aino, but she pushes her away again and replies she hates him. Shikimi moves away and says then she should let her handle the situation since she will not do anything unless anything bad happens between the two lovebirds. Yuzu understands and remembers the time when her mother asked about Aino. And when she said that she hates her, Amesha asks if she can remove Aino from the picture, but she begins to yell at her. She finally knows her real emotions for Aino, while that fella makes shaved ice cream along with Guri and Hiyama. After Shikami's arrival, Hiyama explains how anxious she feels since she is going to watch each and every move. Yuzu says that it would not matter a lot as she will not do anything beyond, according to their mother's order. Hiyama's brain clicks for the first time ever and says that Aino should kiss her in front of everyone to prove Shikami wrong. She feels bad since Aino is a noob when it comes to things about a woman's man. Aino agrees but on one condition. Hiyama should learn how to get along with Guri, but she almost pukes and tries to repeat his condition as she bleeds from his upper mouth. Guri calls her out for a hand of friendship since this would get her Aino's kiss. Hiyama gives a light skin stare and moves her finger on her hand as an agreement between the psychotic ladies. Yuzu does not want him to steal his crush, but she tries to cook something in her mind. In the class, Mary discusses the upcoming festival activities with the class, and Guri calls it a great idea. Without anyone's vote, Mary has made a script for a play and tells that the sis Khan had to visit the nurse's room. While Mary explains the details of the script, Shikami gives Aino the cherry boy look, and he blushes. Everyone roots for Shikami to act as the heroine, while Hiyama will act as the knight, even if it's a male role. The class wants to see a femboy hero, and Hiyama makes an irritated face. However, she asks Mary to give Guri the knight's rival role, since she somehow wants to get a kiss from Aino. While they lay down their roles on the chalkboard, Guri spits facts on Hiyama's face about how Aino kissed her first, and she becomes hella angry. Aino moves down the stairs and meets with Yuzu, where she begins to trust her feelings and kisses her. After the kiss, she acts like the normal anime manga Tsundere and leaves the place as Aino feels confused. Every class member is now working hard on the play's preparations. Aino arrives, and Mary asks him about Yuzu, but he says that he has no clue even if he unvirgin fight her lips. Yuzu brings herself into a church and bangs her big-ass forehead on the table as she wonders why she even did such a thing with someone like Aino. She breathes on the copium and thinks that her hatred made her do this, and continues to bang her head on the table. She comes out of the church just to see Aino and she runs away. Aino catches up to her small legs and asks if that was a way to tease him, and she blushes like crazy. In the end, he gives him the play's script and costume. Yuzu confirms if he came here just for that, and whams the bag on his face. She tells him not to explore her feelings for her and runs away. The festival begins with a bang, and the play goes fine until Hiyama forgets her lines due to her nut-sized brain. The play becomes a mess, and it all turns into a lovely battle once again between Hiyama and Guri. They begin to fight outside the stage, right above the crowd, while Shikami asks Aino about his smooch with Yuzu. Yuzu makes her dramatic entrance and confesses her crime of kissing Aino to Hiyama as she cries. Hiyama holds Yuzu and tells her to face her own feelings for her sake, and there's nothing wrong if she loves someone other than her. Since the whole crowd watches their performance, Hiyama remembers to act good with Guri, and she suddenly kisses Guri which makes a one hell of a Yuri action. The festival ends, and Aino confronts Yuzu about her feelings, but she still acts the same with him. She leaves, and Hiyama buffs her enamel since she kisses Guri, and Guri tries to be all lovey-dovey with her. Shikami arrives, and Hiyama tells her to stop making efforts to break them up since it will never happen. She leaves, and now, Shikami tries to guilt trip Guri by telling her that she's falling behind Yuzu and Hiyama, as the sisters are getting closer to Aino more than ever. Akua is all dressed up, and Aino asks if she is really going to her friend's house, rather than a night out with a boy. She watches him with murderous intent and tells her that she is indeed going to her friend's house and that he should not peep at her. Akua leaves, and when Aino tries to go to his room, Hiyama rings the bell as she knows that nobody is in their house. She wants to stay the night with the lonely boy, and asks for the kiss he promised, until suddenly Guri comes out of the bath, which makes Aino disappointed and Hiyama becomes the devil herself. Guri and Aino take Hiyama inside a room to greet her as they have all of her knives up their ass cheeks. When Guri tells her that they cannot have naughty acts every day, Hiyama becomes even more angry, and when Aino tries to cool her down, Guri starts to take their photo. Suddenly, the bell rings once again, and it's Yuzu who also arrives at his house to have a foursome sleepover. He takes her to his room, and this is the first time she has seen a boy's room. 
Kiri shows Yuzu all of the gay-ass manga she has, and Aino is in disbelief if they really want to do a sleepover at his place. Hiyama is all fired up and asks if Kiri can sleep here, so why can't they? The bell rings once again, and when Aino checks on the door, he sees Shikami and instantly secures his love castle since he wants no idiotic person in there. Hiyama and Yuzu do not want Shikami to join their party, but she threatens to tell their mothers about this, and they eventually agree. This leaves the poor Aino to wonder what will happen today. They go outside together, and Aino faces the most difficult challenges in his life, even harder than when he saw Hiyama in a bikini. They return home, and Hiyama is set to make the dinner along with Yuzu, while Guri and Shikami goof around. While they cook food, Yuzu cuts her finger and Hiyama makes the food as if she has been an experienced dishwasher. Aino helps Yuzu with the finger cut with a bandage, and Guri silently watches them grow closer than ever. Hiyami presents the food on a table that looks like a master chef graduate, but she gives Shikami and Guri rabbit food as she's races towards them. As soon as Aino starts to eat his food, Guri steals from his side, and the whole gang goes through a hell of a night together. Aino takes a bath, but Guri does not even leave him there as she begins to record his pleasurable session. Hiyami hears his scream, and as she lands his eyes on the submissive and breedable Aino, she blushes and runs away while she grabs Guri. When Eno thinks that he can bathe in peace, Shikami arrives to give him yet another stroke. He sits with Korli as he weeps, and says he cannot become a groom anymore since he already got groomed. Hiyami arrives, sits with him, and says she will take him as her groom. She just came out of the bath, and Yuzu goes to the bathroom to drink Hiyami's bath water. She looks mad, and Eno wonders if he has done anything wrong today, but remembers how Hiyami is here since she wants him to fulfill his promise. However, she suddenly says that she would not like it if he forces himself to do it. But Aino grabs her hand and goes in for the kiss. After Aino moves back, Hiyama hugs him and says she feels happy to see this side of Aino for the first time. Inside the house, Shikami teases Guri once again. But she lives on her copium and says she likes to see couples happy since she is a cupid. While everyone sits together, Yuzu enjoys Hiyama's sweaty bath water and buries herself in it. The night has arrived, and Aino lays down all of the futons in his room for the girls, while he forces himself to sleep in the living room. The girls try to get along, and Yuzu is the first one to fall asleep at the sleepover. Hiyama and Shikami begin to have a fight, while our careless main character falls asleep in the living room. When he wakes up, all of the girls are on top of him, except Shikami, who lies on the couch in her glory as she flexes her tanks. As they all wonder what happened, Akua has almost arrived and the house looks like Tarzan's living place. Akua enters the home. And when she sees all of the girls with Aino in the living room, she becomes as cold as a monkey's balls. She has fixed everything, and Guri watches their old album while Akua calls his brother a player since he slept with multiple women. He tries to tell her the truth, but she smacks the remote in his face. Akua leaves the house, and Guri follows her to calm the Ice Queen. They go to a mall to buy clothes and hang out as friends. But Akua is still as cold as ever. Akua wonders and then asks if Guri actually likes her brother, and this cracks the peanuts of Guri as everyone has been telling her the same thing. She asks Akua what it means, and she replies that Guri should ask herself if she's missing something. Akua gets in the elevator as she fights her demons of not liking girly things, and when she reaches the lobby, all hell breaks loose. She sees fallen soldiers, and Stalos is the reason behind this chaos. Stalos loses it when he sees Akua, and she runs away. She hides and cries under a slide, and tries to figure out something herself rather than relying on her brother every time. Corley sees Akua and tries to help her. However, Stalos finds them and he kicks Kolri away. Stalos finally gets intimate time with her, but when he wiggles his tongue on her, Corley punches him away. He finally gets his time to shine, and Corley turns into his real angel form to defeat Stalos. They clash, and ultimately, Corley wins. However, Stalos gets up with the most demonic aura ever, but Akua collects herself and kicks him to the Shadow Realm. Corley comforts and tells her that she's grown. Aino arrives as he hears about Stalos, but Akua has already taken care of him. Aino feels shocked and tells how he has always been by her side, which makes Akua realize that his brother never forgot about her even when he became the Rabbit Wrangler. Guri arrives from behind, and when she tries to call out to Aino, she meets Shikami. Shikami asks why she feels down as she stares at Aino. Shikami silently offers her hand to Guri and says that she can vent her feelings to her. Guri slowly holds hands with Shikami, and when Aino looks behind, she's already gone. Aino calls out to Guri at his home using snacks and canned food, but he cannot find her and it seems she has disappeared. He asks Korli, who Akua holds as she finally finds someone normal in her household, but he does not know about Guri's whereabouts either. Corley is also worried about Guri and borrows Aino's cat body to go and find her in the neighborhood, which instead scares Akua in the house, while Aino thinks she will eventually come home. 
One week after Guri's disappearance, Hiyama is on cloud 9 since Guri is not here anymore, and she can spend all her time with Aino in peace. Yuzu is the opposite and says Guri's disappearance should tickle Aino's booty as Guri returns home normally after 3 days. But it has been more than a week. However, Aino says he should forget about her since it would be a waste of time, and Corley drops the ball and says he should become more serious about finding God's daughter. God could find Giri himself, but his stalker 101 TV had lost its signal and Cornley tells everyone that if they cannot find Giri, God will steal all of their souls as a penalty. Aino does not feel like searching for the monkey, but Yuzu says that she wants to search for Giri not as an obligation, but as a friend since it has become quiet since she has vanished. Shikami helps Mary with some boxes, and when Kusunoki sees them, he slips his whip. Mary rushes to help him, and now the cuck senator has found another target. Aino walks around aimlessly in the hallway as he thinks about how things have become quiet after Guri's disappearance, and suddenly lands his eyes on Shikami trying to lift Kusunoki's balls. He runs to the room and takes Shikami away to the cursed romance anime shed. When he tells her not to break them up, she becomes all rowdy and jumps on his belly. However, Aino does not get sucked into her pace and again tells her to refrain from talking to Kusunoki. Aino asks if she knows something about Guri, but she starts to gaslight him and corner him into the shed. She uses her powers to attach him to the wall and asks if he likes it softer or harder. Aino tries to cut loose, but Shikami goes in and kisses him. He has no time to realize what happened, and Shikami lectures him about how easy it is to be able to cuck. She continues to smooch him for a few more minutes until their saliva intertwines together. Kiri watches them from the tree outside the shed, and Shikami knows about it as he wants her to feel more left out than ever. Back when Shikami took Kiri away from the park, they went out together to a restaurant where Giri told her about her feelings, but everyone started to neglect them. Shikami gives her advice to stay away from Aino's monkey business for a while, and look at him with a changed perspective to be sure of her feeling. Since then, Giri continuously watched Aino and she's glad that Aino feels lonely without her. In the school, Hiyama hugs Aino because she's happy to see him Giri repellent, and Yuzu also jumps in on the train. However, they're not aware that Giri watches them from miles away, and has an odd feeling in his heart. Back at the shed, Guri thinks maybe he does not care about him at all until suddenly Hiyama arrives, and the actual love tyrant destroys the shed to kill Shikami. Aino tells Hiyama about the whole situation that Shikami was cooking up, and she calls her a pussycat since she cannot build anything of her own, but she steals other people's things. After the sisters meet Aino, both have reached new development peaks, and Hiyama asks Shikami to go frick herself and never return. She smirks and sends her button-like knife to Guri, which causes her to fall from the tree and everyone seems happy to see her. However, Shikami fills her mind with garbage and makes her ask Aino how he exactly feels about her. Aino, the person who has a brain the size of a nut, called her a burden ever since he met her and this makes Guri droop in Aider. She covers himself in the raven's feathers due to the sudden setback, and out of the blue, the demon, Mal, arrives. He reveals how Shikami works with him and that this was his plan all along. He flickers his finger, and suddenly the raven feathers explode, and Guri transforms into a devilish form, but she's unconscious. Mao gives him a new pair of clothes, and she finally wakes up as her new self. She feels anew, and bids farewell to Aino since it was his fault that she has changed from a cupid to a devil. She leaves, and Aino is left clueless as he cannot believe it was his fault. Without wasting any more time, Yuzu and Corley move out to find her. Guri has become the opposite. And instead of making people fall in love, she's breaking them up by quite literally stealing their hearts. Yuzu finds her and tries to snap her out of the demon phase, but she tries to steal her love as well. However, Corley saves Yuzu, and when he tries to talk it out, she dips. Hiyama and Aino arrive from behind, and Yuzu calls him a slowpoke for arriving late and lets all of her anger out on Aino since it was his fault. He still fails to recognize his mistake, but Yuzu tells her this happened because he neglected her feelings. But suddenly, Hiyama begins to defend her using nonsensical lover statements. But Yuzu calls both of them stupid and runs away. Aino tries to follow her, but when Hiyama stops him, he apologizes and goes away. Aino finds Yuzu, who wants to unalive herself as she calls Hiyama unworldly things, and Corley adds that it's okay to die. Corley tells them both to die at least once since they need to go to heaven, and that can only happen when their souls are separated from their bodies. He unfolds his third form, and they both fall unconscious. When they wake up, they find themselves in a dark place with fried onion rings on their heads, which means they have arrived at heaven. Both of them feel a grim power in the room, and that is just the useless god, who feels anger toward Mao, and his mood changes as soon as he meets Yuzu. However, Yuzu cannot believe that this homeless-looking ass is a god, and on top of that, he's also Giri's father. 
Kami becomes angry and asks if Corley has something to tell him, and he apologizes. Kami did not know how dirty would Mao get, and even used humans to pull his daughter to the demonic side. He reveals that he once bagged a demon shoddy, and from that woman, Guri was born, which makes her half demon and half angel. Aino and Yuzu did not know that, and now they ask how they can save Guri. Kami tells them to go to hell and give her a visit. Since it's them, they might be able to pull some strings and bring her daughter back to her monkey but useless self. Corley shows them the way to go into hell, which looks like a tunnel from a game where an Italian man crushes turtles and eats mushrooms. In hell, Guri and Shikami lay down on the bed as their job is done now. Shikami gets up and leaves the room to explore the hell, but Mao stops her and says not to become a stegosaurus. Shikami asks Mao to turn her into a devil as he promised her that on one condition, to get Guri on his side. However, the devil likes to play dirty, so he tells her that she's already a devil in a human body, so she should stop asking that. She goes back into the room and tries to betray his orders as she tries to explore hell from the window, but Guri tells her to stop. Guri asks why she likes to steal other people's things, and she remembers her past. Her parents used to tell her not to keep things she was not supposed to, and everyone else judged how greedy she looked. To hurt those people, she steals their things and destroys them to hurt those people. When Guri hears about her past, she calls her an attention seeker and how she always wants people to acknowledge her existence. Guri sleeps, and Shikami is left with a post-nut clarity. Aino, Yuzu, and Corley have arrived in hell with the most disguise-able disguises, and they hear two devils discussing how their life went to crap after Mao became the king. They believe if Guri becomes the king, they might be able to do all the evil things they want. Aino thinks that even if Guri was not a full angel, the concept of making people fall in love and strengthen their relationship was something an angel would do. At Mao's headquarters, Mao shows Guri his room and from there she can do anything she wants. However, she blows his candles and says she does not want to become the king. He tries to persuade her to become the king, but Guri tells him not to find her mother's ashes inside her. This reminds Mao of the time when he tried to make Guri's mother the king, but she hated responsibility and showed him an engagement ring to prove that she was now going to live with Kami and dumped all of the problems on his head. A few months after Mao became the king, he received the report that she had gone missing since Kami had cheated on her, and she was never found. He confronted Kami about this situation, and when he saw his daughter, Guri, for the first time, he saw the reincarnation of her mother. However, Guri has rejected him, just like her mother, once again. The gang waits for a train at the station, and Yuzu is happy to see how much Eno thinks about Guri. He becomes the Tsundur himself, and suddenly everyone starts to panic since they spot a human, Shikami, in hell. As everyone panics, Shikami finds the gang, and takes off their disguises which make them run from the Times Square of hell, and the police begin to chase them. They hear a loud bang, and the big asset's girlfriend has arrived to save them. Hiyama apologizes for letting Eno go without her, and she tells how she arrived at hell, thanks to Tiara, and her imagination of Eno marrying someone else which caused her to die of shock. Yuzu feels glad to see her sister in action again, and she is here to save Guri because Hiyama owes her a favor. All of them reach the headquarters roof and confront Guri. However, she tells them to return to their everyday life and calls them a nuisance. Hiyama jumps in to cook her, but she blocks all of her attacks. To fix her in the head, she headbutts her, but it does not affect her. After she tries her so-called efforts to help Guri turn back, she takes Aino away and says that there is no point in forcing her to revert. However, Yuzu stops and asks Aino to tell his real feelings to her, but Hiyama says being a devil suits her more, so nobody should talk about love to her. Kiri agrees and this backfires on Hiyama as she becomes angrier, and asks how can she call herself a rival when she did not even steal her and Aino's love when she became a devil. Shikami arrives from behind and hugs Hiyama while Guri agrees to take her and Aino's love. Aino worries and tells Guri to let him take a jab at her. She asks if it is a dirty joke as normal Guri would do. And this gives Aino a hint that the real Guri is still inside there. When he tries to talk this out with her, Shikami plays the devil and asks her to tell everyone how much she hates Aino. She thinks for a second, and her inner feelings say that she loves her, but she still does not know what's missing. Her headaches and Aino finally asks what she wants him to do. Suddenly, she stays still, and her wings vanish as she wonders what she wants him to do. She falls, but Aino jumps from the balcony to grab her. Kiri finally knows what she wants, and becomes a full-fledged angel, unlike the half ass Corley. She uses her wings to fly and hold Aino to kiss as she finally understands that she wants Aino to love her. Hiyama throws her knife at the newly born angel and screams at her since she's already on the verge of stealing his lover. They return to the rooftop, and Guri finally confronts Shikami about her behavior. She tells Shikami that if she manages to change herself, Guri will add her to the harem, but not everyone agrees with that. In the end, Aino shows his real emotions to Guri and tells her to do things she always loved to do. And when she moves in to get another kiss, a love rival fight breaks out between Guri and Hiyama. 
Now that Giri has returned to normal, Aino's everyday life is full of corruption from the three girls, and this marks the end of their happy ever after story. What a display of love. This surely is one of the anime of all time. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed our video. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more fantastic and steamy content.